Beowulf, A New Telling, by Robert Nye. Chapter 16. Bees. Beowulf halted his men when they came to the crack that led to the fire drake's den. He had them set the hives down in the entrance. Then he sat for a while, muttering to the bees in each hive. No one could make out what he said. It sounded like nonsense. At last, just as the sinking sun came level with the crags behind them, he motioned for Wiglaf to go forward. The lad, acquainted with his master's plan, slipped into the crack. He carried the white stake in his left hand. In his right hand, and very carefully, as though it contained something infinitely precious, he carried the giant glove. The others were too puzzled to protest. They noticed that the bees in each hive buzzed busily as Wiglaf wriggled past them. Beowulf stooped and murmured soothingly, and the noise subsided. Once inside the narrow passageway, Wiglaf moved on tiptoe, deftly. He was a small person, slim and agile, which was partly why Beowulf had chosen him for the job. When he came to the bright treasure chamber, he skipped into it like a shadow. As it happened, the fire drake was asleep, worn out by its night's havoc, and did not see him hide himself amid the gold. Beowulf was watching the sun. When he judged that enough time had elapsed for Wiglaf to have performed the first part of the plan successfully, he crept into the crack himself. He set his horn to his lips and blew a loud, rude blast. Hello, he cried. Hello, old fire belcher. I am Beowulf. Come to quench you. The fire drake's golden eyes snapped open. It could not believe that anyone would be so foolhardy as to shout at it inside the mountain. Beowulf sounded another mocking note on his horn. Ho, oh, you, old smoky guts, where are you hiding? The fire drake hissed with rage. No one had ever spoken to it like this before. Its tail began to flog the rock. Its body started to swell in the usual way. Peeping from his hiding place, little Wiglaf waited anxiously for the right moment. He could hear the grumbling fire beginning in the creature's belly. Smoke was whistling from its nostrils. It was getting bigger every moment. Wiglaf crouched, ready to pounce. "'Call yourself a dragon?' shouted Beowulf. "'You look more like a glowworm!' The fire drake had reached full size. When it heard this final insult, it swallowed hard in its fury. Wiglaf seized his chance. He leapt. Quick as lightning, he thrust the big stake into the fire drake's jaws jamming them open even as the creature gaped wide to let loose the first foul gust of flame. The golden eyes glared at this new surprise. The barbed tail thrashed and twisted to be at him, but Wiglaf dodged, danced, flitted out of range, and as he went, he threw the giant glove into the open mouth. The fire drake coughed. A hail of cinders flew out. For a terrible moment, Wiglaf thought the glove had come out too, but no, it was still there, caught on a tooth that looked like scythe. As Wiglaf watched, the glove flapped and bulged. Beowulf made a high-pitched buzzing sound. The fire drake took a deep breath and swallowed a big queen bee that emerged from the glove as if in answer to Beowulf's call. They follow the queen bee anywhere. This, whispered to Wiglaf on the way up the mountain, was the essence of Beowulf's plan. Now, in response to another noise he made, sawing at his lips with his square-tipped fingers, all the twelve hives came alive. The bees poured out, a singing angry stream, orange, brown, black, yellow. They buzzed into the crack in the mountain. They whirled past Beowulf and on into the brightness of the treasure chamber. The fire drake saw them coming. Its gold eyes bulged with fright. It tried to shut its mouth, but the stake between its jaws prevented this. The bees poured down the monster's throat like a stream of honey in pursuit of their queen. But when they reached the fire drake's stomach, their effect was like no honey in the world. They began to sting. Hundreds of bees stinging it from the inside. The fire drake roared with pain and fury. It tried to spit out bees, but there were too many. It tried to spew up fire, but its own insides were burning. Little Wiglaf danced with glee. But Beowulf had collapsed in the entrance to the treasure chamber. His armor came undone. It was all too big and heavy. Some men said, long afterward, that Beowulf was killed by the burning breath of the fire drake. 
But in truth, the monster managed only the merest tiny little cough of smoke before turning over on its side and giving up the ghost. Beowulf's bees had stung it to death. Wiglaf knelt by his master's side. Beowulf chuckled. <laughs> A pretty trick, he said. Listen, Wiglaf. When I was young, I'd never have done a thing like that. I'd have thought it was dishonorable or something. Well, the dragon lies dead, and the treasure is there for the good of our people. Who was right? Old Beowulf or young Beowulf? Wiglaf said, Both. Beowulf was quiet for a while. His eyes seemed to overflow with the dazzling light off the treasure, and tears ran down his cheeks. A pity about the bees, he said at last. I love them. They died well, Master, Wiglaf said. Then he began to laugh. He could not help or stop himself. What a trick, he cried. Whoever would have thought of it? Beowulf winked one watery eye. Perhaps it's better that nobody should just now, he said. Tell them what you like, the ones out there. But remember the world will need to be a little older before it understands this last exploit of Beowulf. Yes, and all the others, too. Meanwhile, it must have an ordinary kind of hero to believe in. Make sure you give them that, Wiglaf. It will serve for now. And one day, who knows how far ahead, if my name should live, someone will stumble on this story and put the pieces together again and come up with the truth of it. Wiglaf shook his head. I doubt it, he said. Not this last bit, anyway. Beowulf, said Beowulf. Beowulf the bee hunter. Well, it might occur to somebody. They buried Beowulf's body in a great green fist of land that stuck out into the sea. And they heaped white stones upon it to show how much they had loved him. In the years that followed, the place became a well-known landmark for mariners. Men would point to it on the way to sea, saying, there is Beowulf's grave, and no one saw it without feeling an inch taller where he stood. Wiglaf never told the whole story about the bees. He became king in Beowulf's stead, and ruled wisely and well to the end of his days. When people asked him this or that about the dead hero, he had one way of answering. With a little puzzling smile in his eyes, as he silently recalled a golden stream of bees disappearing down a dragon's throat. Beowulf, he said, was Beowulf. Come now, the more curious people protested, smelling a mystery. There must have been more to it than that. No more, no less, said Wiglaf. Beowulf was Beowulf. And that was all he would say. Ever.